Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this little wire Q&A session. Uh, I made this video because we are getting a question from user Headphonic about 7.14 release video. Uh, there was a very short clip of it, uh, sort of a video synthesizer clip, and he asked me how to recreate it. Uh, so I thought I would make this quick video to show you how to recreate that kind of visual. Here we are in wire, I already rebuilt it, sort of, and we're gonna rebuild this patch from scratch. Um, the patch basically revol uh, revolves around having a lot of meshes. So what we're going to do, we're going to start it with a rectangle mesh. And we're going to make it very thin. Really, really thin. Something like this. We can adjust this later. And we're going to turn this into a mesh 2D. If you're not familiar with the mesh 2D workflow, we do have a video on that uh, on our YouTube channel. So check that out before you continue on this one. We're going to use a whole bunch of transformations to make the lines uh, look curved and into interesting geometric shapes. So I'll create a transformation 2D. And the first thing I want to do is have all the lines point into a certain direction. This is where the most, most mathy part of this tutorial comes from. I'll create a circle pattern node, which generates us uh, a nice pattern of uh, a circular pat uh, pattern. So if I move it really small, you can see it puts um, shapes and meshes into a circular pattern. But we're not going to use it for the translation, we're going to use it for the rotation. For this I'm going to unpack, giving me the X and Y elements of the circle pattern. And I'm going to use the A10 2 function, cross it over, and throw this into an angle converter and move from radians to periods. Now we have all the lines pointing out. What we essentially are doing, we are taking the uh, circle pattern and we see at which angle they are moving. Now we want to have a lot more of them, let's say 300, make it even thinner. Right now we have a ball, but uh, let's see if we move to two, we can already see some sort of pattern emerging from this. Now we're going to put them into um, sort of a geometric shape. For this I'll use, uh, let's first try a linear node. I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation along the way. 300, uh, let's put that into a float 2. And we are here we are getting these weird curved shapes. Now instead of moving this, it would be probably more interesting to have oscillators doing this for us. So I'll disconnect this line and we're going to do uh, a sine oscillator. Uh, and we use the linear to face offset the sine, making sure that every instance of the sine node is at a different offset. Let's put that into the X and here we are getting some cool shapes. Now there's a couple of things we can play with uh, here. We can increase this, the offset or maybe even decrease it. Uh, but also to our angles, we could maybe open and close the circle, getting different shapes. So this is all up to you. I will, I will keep it like this and uh, move on with the rest of the patch. Use Command L, Control L to auto uh, auto layout the patch, making it a little bit more uh, manageable. Uh, let's see. The next point on the agenda is uh, we need to create some kind of material. So we have the material over here. I do know that I'm not using the scale right now. Uh, you are. You can do funky stuff with scale too. Before we move on, maybe uh, have this on the hundred and do something like this. So this is some, this is a variable you can definitely play with. I'm not doing it right now, I'm removing this again, but this is something you can do. Uh, we're gonna create a material, a material, texture, texture material it's called. We're gonna put that in here. And let's first work on the colors before we work on the texture. Uh, for this, I will use a color uh, pattern, a uh, gradient, gradient gradient palette we need so many nodes this is now currently at a size of 10 so it has 10 instances even though we have three, uh, 300 uh, meshes essentially if we push this in we're just going to get the repeated pattern so what i want to do is i want to take the half of this 
Now you could do something like getting the size. Well, we can do that. So it automatically updates. So this takes the size of this collection, which is 300, outputs it as a, as a value at attribute flow, and then you can use it in, as the size of the gradient palette. Right now, we're not going to do anything with dynamic instances, so or dynamic instances. I mean, uh, we're not going to give the user any control over the instances, but this is the kind of stuff you will need to control if you do want to do that. Uh, I'm going to pick 150, and the reason for this, uh, now we get this like repeated colors. Let's make a, make it way more obvious, right? The color is now repeated twice because we are 150 colors, which we have to distribute among 300 meshes, so we duplicate it. I want to expand this to 300. Oh, that's not 300, 300. And we still have the same because it is currently um, repeating the wrapping. But now I want to ping pong it. So it basically goes from red to green and then from green back to red over the size over the span of 300 instances, which gives me a cool little gradient uh, over here. Now I'll stick with these colors for now, but you can yeah, do whatever you want with that. Um, and then for the lines, so we have the texture, and this is a part which I really like because you can get really, really, really creative uh, at this part. I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I think for the uh, 714 release video, I used the grid node, which simply outputs a grid like you can see uh, here in the preview monitor. I'll make that a little bit bigger and use that as a texture. Now, I don't think this will do anything yet. So now it's alpha blending. You can see some lines, probably the YouTube compression will not allow you to see this. But instead of alpha blending, we want to multiply with the texture. And this is basically giving us this nice cut out uh, visual. And now I can play with stuff like the thickness of the grid. Let's move it up to three. So this is getting like an this is just like an interesting way of creating your uh, your visuals. Maybe we want to have more a higher definition grid. This is something you can completely uh, play with. Um, we have our cool little visual going on. Um, this is already really nice, but to finish up, you could do some uh, post processing with it. Probably want to. Uh, of course, we first need to render it. You can pick your anti-aliasing here. Again, like the YouTube compression will probably not show any difference here. Uh, you could add a camera to it, which is cool. I think I also did that in the demo video. So you could zoom in and out of your uh, project. This is pretty nice. Uh, then of course we can add a video mixer and layer black on the background. Make That would probably make everything pop a little bit more. So we already have this. Uh, next, yeah, then then you get into the uh, the post processing step. So if you want to get more like an analog vibe, you could do uh, some scan lines or static noise on top of it. I always like to do uh, some color offset, uh, like minus two, two, something like that, minus two, two. And maybe change one of the colors to, I don't know, white. And you get like these artifacts in the color. Or you could, of course, always go bloom, which is always a solution. So make it very, make it shine. Just experimenting a little bit, little bit with. Uh, what the possibilities are. Maybe make a gradient to like a dark color. And this already gets the uh, gets the visual going. While I was uh, doing a little bit of research for this uh, uh, tutorial, uh, like basically figuring out how my own patch works, I did do some UV offsetting on this as well, and then take some fractal noise and get that in. And this way you can do some, uh, like, well, that's too much, but like having a little bit of fractal noise in there. Of course, you could animate this. Um, 
Oh. Have some fractal noise in there, like get some distortion going. Uh, anyway, I think I should wrap up this video because at this point it's just experimentation. Um, you can, the, the point was <laughs> you use very thin lines and transformation to get the shape in. And then uh, at this point, once we have like a nice shape, you can do all sorts of experimentation by like rotating the circle, uh, maybe doubling the amount of sine waves that are uh, fluctuating and you can get, create your own uh, pretty creative visuals. Uh, I hope this answers uh, Headphonic's question and uh, I hope you like this Q&A format of video. Let me know in the comments uh, if you like them and have your own questions, drop them below and I'll see if I can make a video for you too. Ciao!